Hey guys, welcome back to the Kanai Jones channel and today I'm here with another video and in today's video I want to talk to you guys about something God actually has brought me through. Everything that I come to y'all and talk about is something God is probably currently bringing me through or has brought me through and something I want to talk to you guys today is about is that relationship hindering you? Is it helping you or is it hindering you? And if you don't know, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, so I was in a on and off four and a half year, five year, somewhere in there, four or five years, y'all. This It was on and off, so listen, <clears throat> four or five year <laughs> on and off relationship. Um, and I was disobedient to God. I wasn't listening to God. I wasn't listening to my conscience. I was just doing what I wanted to do. Um, so I want to talk to you guys about that. And as you see by the title, like I want to help you identify if the relationship in your life, or it could be a friendship, think about just relationships, period. Don't, don't box it in to just a romantic relationship. This can be any relationship. So, um, I'm going to take off the glasses for this one. <laughs> Because I don't want to give y'all that glare. And the first thing is you tend to black, backslide. In this relationship, you tend to go back to stuff God has called you out of. You tend to disconnect yourself from God. That was something that was so heavy in that period of my life when I was um, in that on and off relationship. Um, I was so distant from God like when I mean distant meaning like I would I, I didn't want to pray I didn't want to read my word um I didn't spend as much time with God um in the period I didn't even spend no time with God um because the relationship kept me far from God because in the relationship I was being disobedient to God and sin separates us from God. It don't separate God from us because God will never leave you nor forsake you. But it can separate you from God because you're so entangled in sin. You're so entangled with, with something God don't even want for you to where you can't even focus on what God is trying to get through you. So that was one thing. It caused me to backslide. It caused me to be distant from God. That's one way to know if the relationship is hindering you. Second thing, go by the Bible. What does the Bible say about love? Let's find out. <laughs> Cause I, it's in the Bible. <laughs> Let's find out. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. It say, "Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude." It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never lose faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Go back to what the Bible says about love. If it does not align with what the Bible say about love, then that's another way to identify, okay, this is not biblical love. If, if, if in that relationship you're doing things that go against the Bible, it's a hindrance to you. Anything that gets in the way of you and God and, and, and hinders your relationship with God, hinders, hinders your obedience to God, that is a hindrance because sometimes we call ourselves to certain people. God did not call me to be in a four year, four and a half, five year, whatever, on and off relationship. I called myself to that. I probably was supposed to just be praying for the guy. I'm going to be honest. I probably supposed to just be praying for him and, and just a friend or, or, or something. But I called myself to stuff. So what, what are you or did you call yourself to that relationship? Third thing, you will not have to drag 
no man of Christ. It's not your job to drag no man, no woman, nobody to Christ. That's not in the Bible to drag somebody to Christ. They have to have their own willingness to go to Christ. And if they do not, it's your job to be praying on their behalf and, and interceding for them and, and, and fasting for them and going to God with them. But that's not your job to drag somebody to Christ. So, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to start with verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. It says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with the unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Y'all, verse 17, it say, therefore, come out, come out, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. I said, what? So the third thing is, if Y'all are unequally yoked. It's hindering you. If you believe in the Lord, you're trying to follow the Lord. Not saying you're perfect. I did, this is nowhere in here saying perfect. This is if you know you're trying to live for the Lord. Um, you believe in the Lord. And this other person, they not, they not there yet. It's your job to pray for them, not drag them. God say, God say, listen. In the Bible, it literally say, 2 Corinthians, like I told y'all, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want y'all to read it. <laughs> but it say, come out from amongst unbelievers. God literally called us to not be unequally yoked. Don't be unequally yoked. And there's more scriptures in the Bible about being unequally yoked. But God said, don't even touch their filthy things because... You, you 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 trying to you trying to I was this was me and the reason why I'm I, I'm able to speak on this is because I I went through it and every time you're you're dis you're disobedient to God it's costing you something mm, 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 mm. you will never be disobedient and, and, and it just be free it, it costs you something God is so gracious though. Because we don't even get what we deserve. I didn't even get what I deserved out of that. God was so gracious. But I'm just saying, disobedience is not free. Disobedience is going to cost you every single time. It's gonna co it could cost you your time. It can cost you heartbreak. It can cost you a disease. It can cost you a baby out of wedlock. It can cost you all type of stuff. You know a relationship is hindering you if it is, if you're unequally yoked. Go back to the Bible. But yes, y'all, those are three main things that I want. It's, it's, I can go on and on and on, but I, I, I want to be led. I, I, I'm led by the Spirit. And those are the three main things that the Lord want me to touch on. So... Um, if I come back with a part two, I come back with a part two. But I, I just want to let y'all know, like, it, it's not worth being disobedient over. I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I tell the truth, Shane, it's not worth it. But, yes, I hope this helped you. And I'll see y'all in my next video.